some really, really bad people come back. Crabtree has some ups and downs this year. Yeah. Some really, really bad people go to jail, and uh, those boys are getting huge. Some really, really bad people get introduced. Mm -hmm. Would that be appropriate, or would that be a different show? And then some really, really good people end up going to jail. Like, bollocks, or I don't know, <laughs> bloody hell, or... Okay. Hi guys, so we are back on the set of Mad Murdoch Mysteries with Mr. Murdoch himself, Detective Murdoch, I should say. Um, and we are in your suite, I guess, the Windsor House Hotel, aren't we? That's right, the Windsor. Uh, this, this is sort of a temporary home for our lovely couple, but it's become <laughs> more of a permanent home uh, just due to unforeseen circumstance, but uh, <laughs> we like it. It's quite nice. I mean, wouldn't you live in a hotel yeah, if you could? Yeah, it's I would say. I yeah. know. He, he gets a good deal, I think. Yeah, and it was pretty common in the day. I mean, you know, middle class to uh, to affluent to people uh, it was fairly common. There were no real apartments. The apartments were a very new thing, especially here. It all happened after the Great Fire in uh, 1904. So this is not out of the realm of possibility. Absolutely. And um, speaking of 1904, the Great Fire is featured in season 10. Yep. So, and you're now filming the last day of your season. This is it. You guys are here on the last day of season 10, MMX. <laughs> yeah. Um, How has it been for you overall as a season? Oh, this is the best last day ever. Yeah. It's, be <laughs> uh, it's been a great season overall. We've been very lucky. Um, going this late into the calendar is sometimes touchy weather-wise, um, getting things to line up mm -hmm. from location to location. We don't always uh, have the same weather. So uh, we've been very lucky in that regard. Um, but we've had some fantastic guests this year. Our, our scripts were, were so much fun. We had some lighthearted stuff, some intense stuff, and um, our finale is pretty kick-ass. It, it's quite something. Mm -hmm. So, and we... No one is safe. <laughs> no one is safe. Not even you? No. Wow. Nope. Wow, I'm worried now. <laughs> yeah, they'll call it uh, Aldridge Mer Mysteries next year or something. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, obviously, having been now through 10 seasons and being on a show um, for that long is it's rare these days and also we have to say congratulations to you as well because you've won yet another award for well, thank that you. in the Actra Toronto Award of Excellence. Oh, yeah thank you it, that was a bit of a surprise um, you know as performers we do what we do we, we we're um, used to rejection we're used to being fired we're used to shows just ending abruptly and uh you know for a show to go 10 years is is quite something in in any um genre it's incredible and then to be recognized by your peers i mean that's uh that's a great great honor so what is the secret do you think to murder mystery success hard work <laughs> hard work i mean everybody here uh comes prepared to work and um you know, we have a lot of great creative minds and, and everybody's really committed to the show. And, you know, there are all sorts of different little tiny circumstances that lead up to the main thing, which is that we are able to do what we do without too much interference or too much um, sort of too many fingers in the pie. Uh, uh, and I think that's a great thing. You know, we've been allowed to evolve creatively and to do what we do. Um, the way we do it and, and it seems to be going well. Well, one of the things I was wondering is, I mean, now you're approaching 140 episodes of the show. Is it all old hat to you or, you know, are you still surprised by the script and by the show itself? You know, I'm, I'm kind of a kind of a student of show business. I, I, I sort of took that approach uh, from a very young age and so I've always wanted to learn everything about it and I feel like each year I learn something new uh, each year I I understand a bit more of the process the, the creative side I understand more of the producing side I understand a little bit more about distribution and all these different things that make it possible for us to be here you know doing what we do and so it's always interesting uh, and then the writers I for some reason we, we just keep getting these these incredible scripts, these fun scripts every year, and it doesn't ever get, you know, oh, oh we've been there, done that. Um, 
you know, we've got this great sort of background and we drop in historical characters, historical facts, and a lot of different neat stuff. And, and it, it never seems to get old. Um, you know, the bad guys, we have to recycle them sometimes. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but uh, it, it really is great. And, and I don't see it reaching an end anytime soon. Uh, you know, people, the appetite for it certainly hasn't diminished mm -hmm. um, worldwide and, and here uh, domestically. So who knows? Well, speaking of the fan base, you do have some avid fans. And I know that in England, some of the things that fans do is they have tea parties and watch Murdoch Mysteries. What have you heard fans Are you do? Kidding? Yeah, yeah. I've never heard that. Have you heard some other stuff that fans get up to to celebrate the show? <laughs> I did hear from some. <laughs> I did hear that uh, college kids, it, it's, a, it's a drinking game. Yeah. So anytime you hear uh, uh, Bracken Reed say something like bollocks or I don't know, <laughs> bloody hell or whatever, the kids take a shot. Or if Murdoch says what have you or something like that. Um, so, so drinking game. Who would have known? That's a pretty good Bracken Reed impression as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and then, so season 10, we're in now. We have to talk about Julia and William. Their relationship was off to a little bit of a rocky start in the beginning of the season. Julia wasn't really herself. Yeah. So how are they sort of progressing over the course of the season? Well, sometimes, it's, you know, it's difficult. Sometimes we sort of maintain status quo. Sometimes, you know, we deal with certain things. Uh, we, we've brought in a potential uh, a child mm -hmm. for them, and, and we've had to sort of figure out the dynamics when that happens uh also uh, dealing with uh, um post-traumatic st stress syndrome with you know murdering of somebody or something bad happens i shouldn't probably say who yet we're a little early in the season still but um you know these things shape and, and and change the relationship luckily i mean we're able to as actors have interesting challenges and layers to our characters but fundamentally, this is a formatted murder mystery show, and we have to sort of wrap up a murder in 42 minutes or whatever it is. And, and so we don't get to delve too much into that stuff. And sometimes you sort of wish you could. Um, but but then if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I don't know. Well, we are wondering, when are you actually going to go visit Baby Roland? <laughs> is it going to happen at all this season? Well, oh, Baby Roland, uh, those boys are getting huge. I, I don't dare ask for that because if I have to go near them, I might have to hold them, and they are massive. <laughs> they were massive they when were we started up. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Solid, yeah. chunky boys. Yeah. <laughs> and will we finally see you move out of this suite and into your own home? Oh, I can't really say. There's a lot about that this season. Okay, so we're going to explore that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are definitely exploring that, and, and, and it's quite entertaining. It's quite, it's quite good. Mm -hmm. And one of the other relationships I like is with Murdoch and Crabtree. Is Murdoch going to continue to meddle in Crabtree's love life? Wow, actually we're talking about that a lot this year, uh -huh. funny enough. Interesting you should ask. It, it almost seems as though this season was written for, for you and your... Oh, really? Well, I'm excited then. <laughs> your viewers. Um, yeah, actually... Crabtree has some ups and downs this year. He has, uh, he has uh, actually some big downs and then, you know, some meddling and some different things that happen. <laughs> uh, so uh, I dare say um, Crabtree uh, has some, uh, some layers, uh, uh, some more layers this year. Mm -hmm. And will Murdoch and Crabtree continue to bond? Because they tried quite awkwardly to start that a bit more last season. Yeah, we uh, we actually, uh, w some of that comes to a head in the season finale, interestingly enough. Not in the way you might think, but uh, yeah, their relationship definitely gets tested. And um, and I actually don't know how that's going to be resolved. Okay, yeah. so you'll be watching with us. That's right. And um, speaking previously about the past characters returning, can you shed any light on that at all? Well some really, really bad people come back. Mm -hmm. Some really, really bad people go to jail. Okay. Some really, really bad people get introduced. And then some really, really good people end up going to jail. So, yeah. So the jail's going to be pretty full. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Is um, Dr. Grace possibly going to return this season? 
this season, no. No, um, Georgina is quite busy, uh, uh, and we wish her all the luck. She's actually down in Los Angeles. She's doing very well. Uh, it's hard to keep track. Uh, she's a very talented girl, and she's she's very busy. Her, her husband, Mark, is also doing fantastically. He's uh, uh, um, Mark O'Brien. He's in Arrival mm -hmm. that uh, just, uh, just launched last weekend, I think. Um, it's doing really well. It just reached $100 million dollars. Fantastic. Wow. Yeah, he tweeted that. Yeah, just casual. <laughs> Arrival nets $100 million just in, a, in a week. Yeah. <laughs> no, they're, they're doing great. I wish them all the luck. And um, I don't know that we'll be seeing them back here anytime soon. And obviously during the show, I mean, obviously um, you're going to do lots of things as Murdoch and invention-wise. Everyone's wondering again this season, what can we expect from him? Oh boy, uh, we did a couple of things. We did, um, uh, I, the problem is if I talk about it, it, it can give away too much, but we've got some great inventions this year, uh, so, some really good ones. Well, previously, I mean, in season nine, we saw you in the flying suit. And as a fan of avionics, I have to say that was a great episode. <laughs> and what was it like wearing the flying suit and doing that? It, it, well, it was all kind of disjointed for us because there's a lot of effects involved. And, and so I had to do it in little bits. It wasn't sequential and it wasn't, you know, all at the same time. But uh, we had a bunch of visitors here from... Um, uh, Childhood Cancer Canada. We had a bunch of, of kids who are mm -hmm. battling cancer or have beat it and, uh, and their families and they were visiting and we had a pizza lunch and, and we were having a good time and talking and asking questions and on the screen, on the TV, in the lunchroom was that episode and I'd never seen it. All right. So I was getting distracted, <laughs> paying attention to the kids and seeing the flying sequence and I actually cracked up because I, I didn't remember some of the goofy stuff that I'd done in it and how silly we looked uh, uh, you know it's um, it's a lot of fun doing that stuff that's a little more light fair and, and fantastical and, and I know that people uh, um, expect a lot of that from us they, they, they want to see that really sort of out of this world stuff they want to see Murdoch just completely fascinated by some new you know invention and 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 i quite enjoy watching that and i imagine viewers do as well i think so and one of the things that fascinates me is finding out about some of the victorian fads that they had like the tapeworm diet and the flirtation cards are there any certain ones that really surprised you uh the um fascination with underground people yeah. like underground colonies people. yeah mole people i had never heard of that i i, I said you got to be kidding is anybody going to get this stuff when we said we're going to get these jokes mm -hmm. and that was a thing dinosaurs ancient egypt um you know things like that were were very oh robots yeah. you know uh, uh, automated uh, automatons and things like that people were fascinated with that stuff at the time they had free time mm -hmm. and they were you know they're educated so they were, you know, really interested in all of that. Um, it was a, a, an interesting time. And what, we, we know that you're passionate about cycling. And what else are you nerdy about, would you say? Oh, I'm a, I'm a bit of a goof about um, downhill skiing, alpine skiing. Um, I have, uh, on my social media feed, I have a lot of powder videos and different things like that. And it's I have to sort of, switch off the fees I have to mute some of the people because I get really distracted at work <laughs> is there anything that you'd like to see Murdoch do um we we talked about um and we had a great opportunity with uh oh shoot I, I, I almost gave something away there <laughs> um, yeah we we had a we had an idea about uh, doing some kind of tropical jungle thing, yeah. uh, which would be a lot of fun, you know, sort of a romancing the stone type of uh, type yeah, of thing with like tribal. Indiana Jones. Or yeah, or, yeah, yeah, with tribal people. And so that would put us out of our comfort zone. And so it could be an interesting backdrop and an interesting road trip. Mm -hmm. It would be warmer than here, which would be <laughs> nice. Uh, but, you know, I don't know. I mean, how, how far do you want to venture from, from home? 
um, and and what would be acceptable to to the fans. So uh, I I don't know. It'd be Murdoch the Explorer then. Yeah, exactly. And and would that be appropriate, or would that be a different show? I don't know. Um, but you are also doing a special um, in terms of Christmas special and also webisodes this season as well. Can you say anything about those? The the webisodes um, that's something that's different every year. This year they've come up with something very interesting that um, that is going to be centered around the 150th anniversary of Canada, which is like a 150 is like nothing to you guys, <laughs> whatever. Uh, it's a big deal to us. Um, and so they're going to be sort of shooting it with that theme in mind. Um, I don't know a whole lot more about it besides that. Um, but we do have the, the holiday special this year, which we have shot already. And, and that was a hoot. Um, got to do some really fun stuff with that. We have some very cool and different effects. And um, they've sort of done a little bit of a mashup uh, uh, there again and, and put some, some traditional stories and crossed them, and created this fairy tale holiday hybrid thing that's uh, a little bit of sci-fi. It's, kind of, it's <laughs> kind of fun. Awesome. And um, speaking of Christmas, do you have any Christmas traditions in your home? Yes, we actually, we, we watch Love Actually as oh. a family. We do. That's a good Christmas movie. Absolutely. Yeah. We love it. And it's the last day of filming today. It's your wrap party tomorrow. And given it's now your 10th wrap party, do you, have you developed any wrap party traditions? Uh, well, I've found out. We, we typically have a, um, a blooper reel or a wrap reel, and then we play it at the party. But I've just found out today that it's going to be a 10-season wrap reel. Wow. So there's going to be bloopers and highlights from all 10 seasons. Uh, that is, you know, get everybody boozed up in one place and play that. It is going to be a hoot. I can't wait. Wow. I can't wait. Um, so the fans always love to hear about the bloopers. So can you give us any from the season? Oh, lots. Lots. Uh, uh, you know what? We had one, <laughs> we had one year. It was an episode I was directing. And we had this guy cross through the frame with a horse. He was just leading a horse through. It was just a random thing. And this horse went by us. And literally right when it went by us, it let out the most horrendous fart. <laughs> and we laughed and everybody broke up. And it was ah ha ha, very funny. So we did the scene again. The horse let one go in the exact same place a second time. <laughs> It was unbelievable. You think animals are dumb sometimes, but sometimes they they're very they smart. And that's, <laughs> that's on the reel. Amazing. Um, so we're going to let you go and finish your last day. But very quickly, um, who is your favorite Murdoch villain? Oh, I, I'd say James Gillies is, is definitely a very dislikable guy. Mm -hmm. uh, very easy to, to hate. Um, favorite good guy was uh, Bat Masterson, yeah. played by uh, Stephen Ogg. Um, Mark Twain, uh, played by Bill Shatner. Uh, and then, uh, interestingly enough, we have a little bit of bad guy action in our finale this year mm -hmm. that uh, really takes it to another level. Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing people's reaction to that. And any season 11 news at all? Uh, season 11 is one after 10. 